The Yellowstone supervolcano discovery, the USGS is concerned concerning the hydrothermal system recharge. Scientists had concerns over the supervolcano when comparing its hydrothermal systems to others in the United States. The caldera inside Yellowstone National Park, monitored by U.S. Geological Survey for changes that could suggest any type of a new super eruption that could be on its way. It poses significant threat in events in history if it repeats itself. The supervolcano last erupted with a super eruption 640,000 years ago. Kindly support my Patreon channel because YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. I will be uploading at least five videos every day. These videos are different from the videos I have on my regular YouTube channel. Please find the link to my Patreon channel in the description box below each video. Thank you for your support. This is a map of the caldera. As you can see at the 5, 6 o'clock position is the lake, Yellowstone Lake, right over the caldera. And three miles down is the roof of the magma chamber. So that lake is pretty big and it sits on a part of the roof of the magma chamber. This is where the section of Yellowstone Caldera is, the northwest part of Wyoming. And it has magma coming in from Baja, California. That magma comes in through Utah, goes into Yellowstone, and then turns right into Idaho. That's why the Utah March 18, 5.7 magnitude earthquake and the Idaho 6.5 on the night of March 31st, April 1st earthquake did shake Yellowstone, but from what the geologists told us, it mostly had to do with the plumbing of Yellowstone, that is, there are hydrothermal systems. Now, one department of USGS researches the hydrothermal explosion and it monitors hydrothermal systems there. We have over 10,000 hydrothermal areas of Yellowstone and it has 60% of the world's geysers. Now, it, this occurs when superheat the waters, uh, the hydrothermal explosions though that can occur when superheated water is trapped below the surface of the earth, it rapidly converts from liquid to steam and violently disrupts the confining rock. And that can turn into an explosion. More than 20 large hydrothermal explosions did occur in Yellowstone. This happens about once every 700 years and they can eject boiling water, steam and mud and rock fragments over the area a few uh, yards up into up to several miles. So a geologist Robert Fournier explained the way he discovered how this system works during the Inside USGS documentary and he said it's evolving and different people have different thoughts on what the heat source is and how it is changing. When I got to Yellowstone we knew it was volcanic but we were not even sure whether or not there was any magma left down there he said. And he explained, so when the whole concept of what was going on came into focus, very early on we thought that, that we had magma underlying the Yellowstone caldera at fairly shallow depth underneath the whole caldera. Then I got interested in how deep the water might be going, so I teamed up with seismologist Mitch Pitt, and we began to look at how deep the earthquakes were. Dr. Fournier went on to reveal how he discovered Yellowstone was different from other systems that were being studied at the time. He said Bob Smith in Utah was doing similar work. So looking at very precious loca precise locations, Mitch and I determined that seismicity was only occurring within the caldera to a depth of about four to five kilometers. It's about three miles down. He said, so I realized and reasoned that the water could not be going into the ground any deeper from the recharge then there's seismic activity to keep things open and this put a depth of circulation on the hydrothermal system about four to five kilometers so this then gave us a baseline to look at what a hydrothermal system with mostly pretty shallow recharge by meteoric water looked like and it was kept open by seismic activity 
that only extended about four to five kilometers down. It's about three miles down. He said we were concerned about why there was a difference between what Don White had found at Steamboat Springs, Nevada, than what we had found in Yellowstone. He says, I can only speculate about Steamboat because I have not worked there, but it was coming out of a granitic system and was not experiencing a great amount of seismic activity to keep things open. Dr. Fournier detailed and explained how they soon learned more about the system below the caldera. He said, I think the early seismicity that opened up the hydrothermal system at Steamboat Springs, Nevada, had opened up fractures in the rock, but the, the system was not so hot that there was a lot of movement of hot water from underground. So it wasn't getting much hotter than about 200 degrees Celsius to 210 degrees Celsius at Steamboat, so it was picking up enough silica to stop things up. So even though the seismicity may have occurred a long time previously, it was remaining open. And for that reason, water was able to get out of the system fairly rapid, uh, readily without depositing a lot of silica. But at Yellowstone, it was just the reverse. The permeability and the recharge path was kept open by deep seismicity, which was opening up things that large amounts of silica in the water was stopping the flow out of the system. The park's hydrothermal system would not exist without the underlying partially molten magma body that releases tremendous heat. Its system requires water, such as underground water from the mountains surrounding Yellowstone Plateau, where snow and rain penetrate through the rock. The water's temperature rises well above boiling point, but remains in a liquid state due to the great pressure and weight of the, un of the overlying water, he said. The result is superheated water with temperatures over 200 degrees Celsius. And this is by uh, Callum Hoare on Express UK by USGS data and explanations from the geologists there. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.